Today I'm working on my daughter's car, which is a 2000 Pontiac Grand Am. This is the GT model, it's a V6. The car won't start. Uh, there's no spark going to the spark plugs, and I believe it is the crankshaft position sensor. Man, that thing was a monster to find. But before I get to it, I'm gonna show you everything I tested out and show you why I determined that it's the crankshaft position sensor. So let me go ahead and show you that right now. Okay, right here is the ignition control module. The, I have a brand new one on the car. This is the old one. Right here is the ignition coil. I just took one of them off because I had to. Right here is the ignition coil. I just took one of them off because I had to test it. Uh, I'll show you the other two in the ignition control in a second. On the ignition control module, you have these three connectors. You have this side, which is the ignition supply side. This is how the ignition control module gets its power. This one is the electronic spark control, and this one right here is the crankshaft position sensor. So the first thing I did, I checked my plugs, went and bought new spark plugs. Went and bought new spark plug wires. My ignition control module itself is brand new. So with a multimeter reader, I checked the ohms on the ignition coil. This was fine. Then what you do, you hook up a 12 volt light and you ground it and then you check to see if power is coming from the ignition control module on these two prongs right here and I wasn't getting any power. Now you do all this when it's hooked up to the car. I'm just showing you right here so you can see it better. Then I tested the connector to see if it was getting power so power is coming to the control module, it's just not leaving the control module. Okay, right here, here's the ignition control module connected to the car. Here's the spark plug wires, here's the ignition coil. Here, right here, I don't know if you can see it, but right there, those are the two prongs. And here's the power supply. So that's how I tested everything. So power was coming from the power supply but it wasn't leaving the ignition control module. So what the book said, because I have the book, I have the book right here, and the book says, test your spark plugs, test your wires, test the uh, ignition coil, um, test the ignition control module. Then when I tested the ignition control module, it wasn't getting any power leaving it, so then I had to test this right here which is your crankshaft position sensor connector and no power was coming from this so that led me to believe that I need to change my crankshaft position sensor okay the first thing you want to do is you want to check to see if spark is coming to your spark plug or if spark is leaving the spark plug I, I simply took the spark plug out and I connected the spark plug back into the boot I put a jumper cable on it and then I just grounded the jumper cable to the battery or you could just ground it to the ground. Now if you have a spark plug tester it primarily works the same way and you just will ground it to a piece. So I'm going to have uh, the car cranked over and you'll see that spark is coming out. Okay crank the car. So that's how you know that your spark plugs are working. Okay, now the second thing you want to do is test the resistance in your spark plug wires. So I have the wires, I have it set on ohms, and I'm just checking the resistance. Okay, now the third thing you want to test is your ignition coil. Right here, I just have the alligator clamps on, on the two towers of one ignition coil. And I'm going to turn my multimeter reader on, and I, I have it set to ohms it's reading at 6,000, 6,100 and the book says you should be between 5,000 to 7,000 so that's how you check the ignition coil for resistance okay now the fourth thing that you want to check is to see if power is going to your ignition control module you disconnect the ignition supply and then you use one of these little 12 volts I have it grounded to the battery Simply one end just grounds to the battery. You know, 
you just ground it to the battery or another good ground. Put this back on. And then you put the car, you put the key in the car to where the it's just on. And then as soon as you touch, if you're getting power, the light will come on. So that's the fourth thing. Okay, now the fifth step, you have to check the crankshaft position sensor, which is already unplugged it. And you have to turn your multimeter to AC volt. Then you take each little connector and you put it in here while somebody cranks the engine. And you need, according to the book, you need at least 200 millivolts. Uh, I don't know if I could do this with one hand, but you get the point. So you put each prong in there and then it's kind of hard for me to hold. And then you crank the engine and you want to get at least 200 millivolts. 200 millivolts. I can't do it with, with one hand, but you get the point. Okay, now the sixth step, we're going to test the ignition control module to see if it's sending power out. Right here I have the light on the ignition coil, 2.5. So you see the, the, the little nut, I mean the bolt right here. Let's see if I can do this for you guys. This, this bolt is a 5.5 millimeter and then there's one right here in the back. So I take those off and then we'll test the ignition control module in a second. Okay, you want to take your 12 volt light again and attach one lead onto your ignition control module. And then on the other one, when someone is cranking the engine, you touch it and the light should come on. Okay, crank the engine. Do it again. Okay, this is how I told you how I tested so many of the other parts of the ignition system. This is how I, I tested the ignition control module. I took my multimeter reader, I put it on ohms. When I touch this plate, it gives me no, I'm sorry. When I touch this plate, it gives me no reading. When I touch the plate of the new one, it gives, it, it registers a 1.0 to 1.3. So that's how I tested that. Now, it took me a minute. Well, it took me more than a minute, but it took me a while to find that crankshaft position sensor because I don't know who in the world decided to put it there, but it's in a hard spot. So, you know, I pulled on the wire and I followed the wire. That didn't work. Laid under the car, got on the top of the car, couldn't find it. I luckily found it. And let me show you where it is from the top view, even though you can't see it. Right here, right down here, is, there's your exhaust manifold. There's the exhaust manifold, and you can see, well, right behind, right, well, there's the exhaust manifold, and right under the exhaust manifold, that's where the, the um, crankshaft position sensor is. So I'm going to go underneath and give you a better view, well, give you a different view, so we can see if we can see it from there. Okay, I know it's going to be pretty hard to see this on camera, so I'll do my best to describe it. Right here, I'm under the car. Here is the oil pan plug. If you go straight up from the oil pan drain plug, about 10 inches, and then if you go over roughly 3 inches, so up 10 and over 3, you'll be able to see the crankshaft position sensor. Right there I zoomed it in and that is the crankshaft position sensor. It's right there and like I said it's 10 inches straight up from the the oil pan plug and 3 inches to the right or towards the passenger side. Now I'm gonna go back to the top and show you how I, I took it off and then I'll show it to you in a second. Okay now that I'm back on the top uh, it's, it's almost impossible for me to film this. I don't even know how good of a view you got from up underneath, but like I said, find your drain plug, go up 10 inches, and then roughly three, four inches to the right, and you'll see the uh, crankshaft position sensor, you'll see the wire and harness. Now, from on top, this is the easiest for me to do, but it's a blind. 
uh, it's a matter of fact it's a 10 millimeter nut that uh, is holding the crankshaft position center uh, in the car so what I did I put this book here just to support my weight and then I'm reaching obviously the car is cold make sure you're doing this when the car is cold and I'm reaching down here and I put on a ratchet reaching down here and I put a ratchet on it and it's a blind reach and I'm on the ratchet right now and I'm taking it off so apologize that you guys can't see any of this but as soon as I take it off I do my best to film all that just in case you wanted to know I had to use a little a little ratchet because anything else and this would hit whatever is down there hitting. So I had to use a real small one. Okay, right here, here's the 10 millimeter nut that you need to take off. So after I did the best I could do with the ratchet, I had to just take the socket off and put the socket on and then just turn. And then I had to use a long screwdriver and kind of pry it away from, from the car. And now it's just dangling, just left the only thing that's connected to is the harness so let me go ahead and show you that and then you'll know how to take off your uh, crankshaft position sensor okay here it is right here just dangling this is the crankshaft position sensor maybe this gives you a little better better idea like I said here is the oil plug roughly 10 inches straight up and then three to four inches towards the passenger tire and here it is right here so it's just a simple clip just like always I'll take this clip off and then I'll show you to you in a second okay right here is the crankshaft position sensor in my hand this is what it looks like this is how the little nut goes on there uh, I didn't mention this earlier but when you go into your car put some uh, goggles or some type of eye protection on so again, here's the crankshaft position sensor. I hope I did somewhat of a decent job. I know it's kind of hard uh, to see. It's kind of hard filming it, but that's where it is. Uh, as usual, I appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up. Be sure to answer them. You guys have a good one.